And welcome to Motor Cult Podcast, episode 78. I'm Eric Berger, joined, as always, by my co-host, Ryan Siniski. Hello, sir. That's me. Hello. How was your drive down here today? Oh, boy. It was <laughs> eventful. Um, actually, the, the, the total tally was five cars spun out previously to me seeing them. Well, it is snowing right now, so yeah. I could see people uh, forgetting how to and basically live. And then there was an Aveo, which did very impressive. Um, a rear end got loose. Car did a 360. They tried to save it, overcorrected, almost had it, but they overcorrected. Mm-hmm. Did another like, ha- like 180 or so. Okay. And then rear end into a concrete barrier. Uh, and, oh, uh, they went ass first into the yeah, concrete yeah, barrier. And they, okay. then that was into that Aveo. Um, yeah, that's definitely totaled. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, shockingly, uh, most of the cars I saw on the side of the road were crossovers. Um, that's not shocking. There were two Muranos, a very clapped out Tahoe. Um, How bad do you think the tires were in all these vehicles? Uh, probably awful. <laughs> and then I think like a, in a Buick Century and then an Audi. So okay, four of the five cars were all-wheel drive. Fair enough. <laughs> or four, or four wheel drive. Well, I mean, yeah, I suppose all wheel drive isn't necessarily always created equal but either. But the thing that got me the most set off, um, <clears throat> the term is triggered. And triggered, I should say. <laughs> the thing that got me the most triggered, though, is I found that crossover drivers have developed a new tactic of terrible driving. What do you mean? Well, it's I call it the um, the crossover standoff. It's like a Mexican standoff, but for crossovers. So um, somehow two crossovers facing two, one another. Two crossovers are trying to get into each other's lane. One's trying to get into the left lane. One's trying to get in the right lane. Okay. And each one slows down equal to the other one until they come to a complete stop in which at that point I lay on my horn. <laughs> and the entire time they're doing this, we're on 169, which is currently made entirely of ice. Okay. Yeah, the roads are yeah. very icy right yeah, now. Yeah, they're really, like, really awful. It's whatever. Um. But I'm sitting there the entire time with the ABS just, like, losing its mind. Like, ah, shit. Ah, shit. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was my, uh, my, my commute here. And I <laughs> uh, didn't have time to get breakfast or anything. But uh, I got here in one piece. We'll, we'll survive. Yeah. There's, right. m- m- there's large amounts of poo in my car, though. Uh-oh. Yes, yeah, so my butthole is puckered the entire ride. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't a puckered butthole eliminate the poo flow? Well, not if you're uh, too scared. <laughs> oh, I see. Momentary lapse. There, in there, there was a moment where I was, I almost joined those crossovers and oh, the Audis in the sake. ditch. So yeah, other yeah. than just extremely slow drivers, and uh, actually, when I was coming down here on five, I decided to turn right on Audubon and do a U-turn so I could drive across with the green light because it's faster than the left turn lane sometimes. Yeah, and I was doing probably twenty over, and I get into the right. Slow down lane, and I get into regen. The regen's fine. And then I get into the actual brakes, and there's, like, ice. I mean, yep. it's just not slowing yep. down anymore. So I just initiated the... Uh, <laughs> E-brake. And... No, I, t- oh. I turned it in and just let it slide, but that was that was fun. <laughs> but, you know, obviously no issue. Not even close, because winter tires. And that's just one of those things. Every time I drive in a setting like this where it is icy and snowy, I'm just like, wow, maybe these tires should get replaced next year. And then I get out of the car and I almost fall down. I'm like, oh, no, the tires are just fine. Yeah, no, I, it's it's definitely the difference. It's I <clears throat> probably should buy new tires, but it's one of those things where I'm trying to save money right now. So I'm not doing any new tires. Anymore. Someday you'll have a second set of wheels and winter tires, but probably but no, not I, anytime real soon. It, it'll probably be spring when they start going on sale. Like I, I'm kind of stretching. It's like if I... I'm sure if you could I w- find some if steelies was, from Mazda 3 that have snow tires on them. Yeah, if I was less confident in my driving abilities, I would get snow tires immediately. Yeah. But it's like most of my life I didn't need snow tires. And right. You don't need them yeah. necessarily, but it does make driving much more enjoyable. No, and so. it, to be fair, there were a couple of cars that were on that I saw with snow tires get mm-hmm. on to 169 having just as much of a problem as I was. Hmm. Because the issue was just, like, sheer black ice all over the place. Right. I mean, winter tires aren't necessarily a... Uh, I, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but it's not, like, it's not just going to save you. It's not like a, it's like a radar detector. I mean, yeah. it's an extra, no. like, 10% of information no, it's, and it, capability. It's, it's But armor. the 10% it's, usually makes the difference. Yeah, exactly. It, your your driver skill makes a big difference. And, well, the issue was is it wasn't consistent ice. Right. It is, like, Yeah, I could feel a dry, little bit. And then a little bit of ice, mm-hmm. and then dry. With and the then, short wheelbase, yeah. I felt it like juddering around a little bit. But then I like just hammer the throttle, and I don't see the speedometer just like 
peg, so I figure that it's not that slippery. Uh, yeah, It'll that's, be fine. that's why I do it, put in fifth gear and I stomp yep. on the gas. If I still have traction, just... we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't, then maybe I'll put a little more distance between me and the car in front of me. But Exactly, yeah. Anyway, let's move on to beer. Yeah, we got Nordies because, you know. Neither one of us has been beer shopping in like a year, so. No, I've actually been, I've sustained myself since Thanksgiving off of free beer. That's fair. And I've not lowered my beer intake or anything. It's just I've gotten massive quantities of free beer. It's a, that gentleman that came into work to and said, shop, I'll yeah. give you 100 beers. Uh, came <laughs> Holding back. true. Yeah, he came back. <laughs> and the guy gave me, well, because it was just me in the shop, he gave me 25, which is pretty awesome. Very fine. So, yeah, good guy. Yeah, I'm still living off reserves from fall, <laughs> basically. That's kind of what everybody does in winter. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, I'm going to move into our first topic, just get right into it. Okay, okay. Um, in France, uh, actually what on paper is a very cool car collection has gone up for auction. Okay. However, there's a slight issue with it, because this might be the most poorly maintained collection of cars oh I've ever seen in my life. Are these on dirt floors? Uh, I think so. But like... This looks like that pile of five series we saw in Bulgaria or whatever. Yeah, it was exactly. A years yeah, ago. It, it's um, except these aren't under car covers. <laughs> no, these are. <laughs> it, it's like a bunch of really cool cars. If you look at this list on paper, it looks really cool. Like in this, the oh, first I see picture, a Mira. Yeah, this is coming from Haggerty.com, and when you see the first picture, you see a Mira, a original Riviera before they were rear wheel drive or before they were front wheel drive. Two of those actually. Um, you've got a Lancia Aurelia, a uh, Lincoln, it looks oh, like. Sorry. A, no, no, keep going down. A Series 1 Jaguar E-Type. It's not a super early, but it's a little bit of a later Series 1. It doesn't have the hood uh, clips on the outside, but mm-hmm. yeah. But still, it's a Series 1 Jag, and just covered in dirt. I didn't and realize they had coupe. FJ uh, wipers on them. Oh yeah, they do. Look at that. Yeah, that, that was that was early in the series one. Triple I think. windshield wiper. I think that was only in the series one. Whoa. Yeah, a Porsche three fifty six pre A, so it's just a three fifty six before that three fifty six A and three fifty six B. Huh. And uh, that is beyond saving. Oh, gross! Why do they have a C three vet? Um, if you scroll down, oh, it's eighty one coupe. I've got no idea. Um, <laughs> yeah, a mirror and with a massive dent in it, like somebody attacked it with a shovel. <laughs> That's so sad. Yeah, that's not in terribly good condition. Oh, yes. Jan, look at this van. That thing looks like it's spooked. Citroen. Citroen. Four- four- Rosal. Citroen. Forgan Roselle. But if you click through the pictures, I'll show you more of the highlights from it. Um, I just used the wrong trackpad. That's not going to help. No, it won't. So we oh, saw okay. That. Yeah, we saw that. Um, that's a early... It's a uh, Lincoln Continental Mark II. And then, like, this guy just, like, collected random cars, and some of them were really cool, and some of them sucked. It's nice to see the 356 still has the engine in it, but that body, I think, is... You could beyond. save that. I, you would be surprised what people go through to save early 356s. And that's true. I mean, you have a lot of money that you can make on it, so... Oh, that, God. That can you jag, imagine the odor? Dude, imagine the Ugh. detail bills. Ugh. <laughs> oh god look, Good all, that, C3, look at but... all of that hair on that engine oh, oh my yeah. god this is disgusting so good it means to like, go away yeah i don't feel that any... citroen fargan is a really cool rear end yeah it does that thing looks pretty arrow gotta say that thing looks so spooky in the front i know with its <laughs> giant <kids. laughs> oh hello <laughs> but yeah those are um it was a really cool car collection. I saw everything in there. It's like, yeah, if it was in perfect condition. Like, these are a bunch of really cool cars that somebody took no. It's like if Jay Leno had his collection and then just didn't have a mechanic or anybody or even look at his cars and actually just completely forgot about all those cars entirely. Like, that's basically what that is. It almost strikes me as like the Sultan of Brunei strategy where you just like hoard cars. Yeah, and then you just never touch them again. Yep, that is exactly what the Sultan of Brunei it. does. <laughs> Maybe drive it once. I don't even know. So did you know in Brunei it's actually illegal to talk about the royal family's wealth? You just don't talk about it. Nobody, Why would I even know that? Nobody knows how much money they have. Well, okay. They have as much money as Brunei does. <laughs> <laughs> it's all public money, and the public money is private money. Yes. And it's, it's all mine. Actually, pretty close to how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't deliberately trying to be facetious, which is weird for me. But it ended up being that way. Well, 
I, I learned that from Jana's awesome uh, Christmas present to me, the I, uh, you curiosity guys. stream <laughs> that she got me. Okay, that makes a little more sense. I'm like, how does this just come up in passing conversation for you two? <laughs> but then again, I learned a long time ago to just stop asking questions about that. So. Exactly. Uh, can, you, can, you see the, can you see the notes? Uh, oh, yeah. Is your laptop still being... No, it's, I'm going to put it in the microwave. I'm going to this episode. <laughs> Maybe I will bring you one of those you little Samsung Q1 first? tablets. <laughs> All right, anyway, I'll let you go on with your topic. Fair enough. So mine is not really a national topic. It's more just something I want to talk about uh, with car culture. And it's something I was actually thinking about earlier this week, I think listening to another podcast or maybe cycling through car groups on Facebook, maybe seeing winter meets popping up on Facebook, things like that. But I wanted to discuss the fact that I think there are more hardcore car enthusiasts where there are real winters. Probably per capita, yeah. Because so. when you're in California and you've got a project, you put it off, and there's never like a winter like pent up planning phase where you can't work on it, but you want to. Yeah. And there's no springtime hustle where you actually get a bunch done. That's true. You you do have a good point with that. I think there's a lot of cars that just never get. Touched. I think. Well, I think what it is, I think it's per capita. It's probably higher uh, in the northern states. Because there's a lot of people in California, like there's a lot of people in California who are just kind of weenies. So they're like, oh, dude, I, I love Japanese nostalgia cars. They are so cool. I got this 280ZX and I mm-hmm. put some 280ZX wide and steelies on it <laughs> and I lowered it with S13 suspension. It's a pretty dope build. I mean, I'm, I went pretty far with Hashtag it. Hashtag built, not bought. Yeah. And like that, I'm like, that was an actual conversation I had with somebody. That sounds in terrible. In California. I would have been sad about that. And I'm like, oh, cool. What'd you use? He goes, I just found this on the internet. Like, I guess you can use thir- S13s. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, I just I got an old school Subaru at home back in Minnesota. And I'm like, I'd like make my coilovers. He goes, what? I'm like, yeah, I'd like find like five different cars. Something that's close. And then. <laughs> I'd find five different cars, slap a bunch of crap together, trial and error my way to victory. And he goes, oh, wow. Yeah, I couldn't have ever done that. I'm like, and I'm like, it's not that big of a deal. It's just like, like, oh yeah, maybe they extra, don't take it quite as far, but in an extra ten minutes of like, I don't know. There's a lot of people stuff. around here that just like bag or race land their car and call it good. Well, no, that, that's what I mean. Is like just like the most simple of like DIY stuff mm-hmm. to a lot of people, and that are more just kind of basic with their interesting cars. A and that lo- could be true, but I, I mean, what I'm it, finding is is really just like the amount of cars that. I mean, the good stuff that we want to buy here yeah. is in, you know, Arizona, it's in Nevada, it's in yeah, exactly. SoCal, and it's just like a project that somebody started, like, they, they took the engine out just, of it, like, 15 quit. years ago, and then yeah. they're just like, oh, I'll get to that in a month, and then the month no, turns that, into a year, it turns into a decade. Yeah, that's... Then there's, and in Minnesota, there's that we, can't, as well. we can't do yeah. that, because, like, winter, if you get bored of a project, you can't just leave it sitting there most of the time, like... You, Space constraints, you like gotta get rid of it. Yeah, it's gonna or another. It's gonna rust out. Well, or that you're too. Gonna, or right. you're gonna hoard. Or you're just fill up your driveway with and that's, half finished projects. That's what I think it is. But I also find that it's potentially better in rural areas versus city center areas. That's true. Yeah, not quite as much as the geographic area, but like I really think that that is a thing like if you have a really severe harsh winter and you've got a decent warm you know well, set of months there's, a, there's another thing is you know in winter um i get all antsy no way so uh, you're antsy right now yeah super is antsy. it because of all the ants on the table yeah, there's a lot of ants in my pants oh yeah oh it's really weird did you put one of the tarot ant traps in your pants no can i have one <laughs> <laughs> i got a spare one on the floor here tight i'll grab it in a second <laughs> but um no, it, it, you know, like Minnesota, like you get all antsy and you start like, like really wanting to go out and do car stuff. I was talking about this actually in Japanese nostalgia car where uh, we had a question a week. Uh, I think it was last week, where I said like, "What's your like, what's your best winter car spot? Mm-hmm. Like JNC winter car spotting story?" Okay. Because I was talking about like you know in California, you guys don't get this. Like you guys, forever, it's always going to be. Cool and S thirty like a uh, yeah, S th- like a like a yeah like S thirty S thirty a two forty Z two sixty two eighty Z some sort of chassis yeah. code for something yeah Z, a first gen Z car <laughs> um you're like oh cool yeah S thirty Z car this is this is awesome mm-hmm. whereas like in Minnesota like if you're in like old Japanese cars yeah they all kind of disappear in November and then you gotta wait till like May and then it starts getting really weird because you you go from like you know, June being ah cool. What what a cool two forty Z to right. like January is 
is that, is that a 240Z? Is that a first generation MPV? <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> oh, you mean like the winter beater spot? Uh, not even a winter beater. Like, it's just like that happens to be somebody's car. And That's you're amazing. just like so jaded at this point trying to get a hit of like a cool car that you're like really grasping at straws. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, that, that's that's what Minnesota gets. But that, at the same time, that also kind of grasp at straws is like, all right, I gotta like go and do something. And so mm-hmm. then you start going like, okay, how can I make my project that much cooler? And then you got six months of only be able to work on your car and do nothing else. Right. So. And I, I've personally kind of gotten that this last week. Yeah. Where I'm like, I'm looking at like the work lists I've got made for myself on each car, and I'm like, oh sweet Jesus, there's a lot to do. Yeah. I'm I, starting um, to like order parts and plan it and schedule it. This and... winter was a little bit weird for me, because um, I was like. It, well, I think it's because right before winter, like I found out that after I did finish the engine swap in the Cressida, that I had to take the transmission back out and put another one in. Yeah, that and sounded that, like a world of fun. Yeah, and so I've just spent the entire winter <laughs> being like, I'm no, I don't even want to look at that car. Like I'm still mad about that. So well, and you have the Mazda Five, so there's really no reason why you should have to look at the Cressida over the winter. Yeah, I've got. Well, I mean to work on it because you know I got a heated garage and everything, so it's like even still, yeah, there's no motive. Like I, I have heaters in like all my garage, even like here. Yeah. Like I could make this 80 if I wanted to. I'm still not working on anything. Nah, it's in just, the winter. Yeah. Like, I just don't want to. It's cold and it sucks. Yeah, like I gotta and open the door and then I gotta wait for like forty minutes for it to like equalize again. Yeah, no, not Just, worth it. Nah, it's like gonna be a hard pass on my on my side, but yeah. So it, it, it's spring, I'm probably gonna be like spinning. Like Jan's not gonna see me for like three weeks and, <laughs> and get all my cars done. <laughs> like <laughs> once I finally get over it about the Cressida, which is coming. It'll happen in the spring. Is it started like going back on Instagram and liking photos of an X eighty three? So I'm like, I'm getting back in the swing of things. Like, <laughs> maybe I'm not so mad. G- at you. G- give me, give me a couple of weeks, and I'll, I might, might pull it into my garage. So I was really trying to get the two thousand two down here and work on it over the winter, and I still want to do that, but I don't have the chassis side engine harness. It's still with my buddy Aaron. It's still in his car. In Cambridge, Minnesota, and he's no. working out of oh, state. Oh God, no! So I can't coordinate with him because he's here a lot, but he's only here for like part of a day usually. Oh, and I just I can't get it. But like, if I bring the car down here, I'm like, sure, I can get the brakes working, I can get the clutch working, but I won't be able to start it. And yeah, so, like, no, I just it's... if I can't do everything, I'm just like I'm not touching it. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. It's not fun. No, and that's, that's why I'm like so frustrated about like my Subaru. Yeah, it's. The same issue. It's a wiring harness issue. I'm just like, I don't want to have to rewire the whole car. I guess I'm just going to look at that one, too. Okay. <laughs> ah, I'm just going to wait for the right harness to show up, and then... It'll, it'll come to me when it's ready to be put back together. <laughs> I was really jazzed, because there's a Subaru is that uh, you pull. It turned out not to be a GL10. So was that that blue one that was painted with, like, the sil- silver, World Rally? It was the silver one rap? with the... It's silver with World Rally wrap, yeah. Yeah, whatever. But that turned out to be a single-point fuel injection, so... Dang it. Was it uh, didn't have much use to me, unfortunately. That's frustrating. Well, at least it's not quite as sad that it was in the junkyard then. That still is pretty sad, but whatever. Uh, I'll uh-huh. get over it. Well, we've already covered our saddest junkyard moments, so, so there is that, that. That is very true. That that made me pretty uh, salty. <laughs> um, you know what else kind of makes me salty? What? I'm never going to be able to afford a Volvo P1800. Oh, dude, those have been through the roof for ages. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. Is they've been like expensive, but they haven't been like getting to blue chip. Until now, oh, just like the Mark IV Supra, yeah, because <laughs> it's actually a priced about on par. Because we now have had our third uh, P eighteen hundred sell for over ninety four thousand dollars. That is several money. Yeah, um, well, I mean, if you think about it, it's a four cylinder Volvo, but at the same time, it's also like aren't almost actually no all Volvos now are four cylinders. Yeah. Hmm. But I mean, maybe all modern Volvos are P eighteen hundreds. The the P eighteen hundred is an interesting car <clears throat> because you know it it's not like the fastest car in the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's realistically not any faster than like a two thousand two. Right, the thing I mean, is, it was impressive for the day, certainly. But what's cool about it is that it looks like it does. It is an absolutely gorgeous car, and it will clear the odometer multiple times over on the original engine. Yep. Like yeah. That, like, Isn't um. Doesn't this chassis of car still hold like the world record for By most far, Mars yeah. on the? There's that Greek taxi cab driver with the uh, W124 for a while, but um, yeah, this car just absolutely smashed that record like three <laughs> times over. 
there's one of these like like <clears throat> there's one of these like four million miles on it, and like Volvo did the same thing, and like they offered him another car. I thought it was like two point something million. I think it might. I think it's more. One hundred and twenty horse. Wow. Yeah, that's actually probably a fair bit. Actually, yeah, that's well, probably a two thousand two speed. Yeah. One hundred twenty horse probably be Datsun. That's I mean that's Datsun thing is two forty light though. Yeah, that's Datsun two forty power levels. Um, Another Haggerty article. Interesting. Yeah. I'm, I spent a lot of time on there. It's a really good blog. <laughs> um, Is that replacing your uh, bathroom iPad site from Jalopnik? Yeah, <laughs> it okay, is. I got gotcha. you. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the, yeah, so I just found that really interesting that the uh, the P1800, and it's a lot of the things that people like about the Supra, they also like about the P1800. It's, you know, mm-hmm. They like the looks, they like the, the reliability, I think, is a huge part. It is, because, I, I mean, a Supra on stock power... We'll do the same thing as this. Yeah, and I think that that's <clears throat> that. This seems to be like a trend with these kind of newer era collector cars, or it's mm-hmm. like it used to be whatever the car isn't reliable, who cares? Um, but now it's like a lot more people that are collecting mm-hmm. are driving their cars. So I think that reliability is playing. Which I love personally. Yeah, and I think that I think that reliability is playing more into the collectability of a car. Well, and cars are getting generally more reliable as time goes on. Well, yeah, but I mean, like these. If we're looking at the P eighteen hundred and the Mark IV Supra, like these mm-hmm. are not these are abnormally reliable cars. Like you can't really yeah. you can't really say like it's just a reliable car. It's not like a Buick or something. Like no, this is like an extr- like this car is unkillable. Right, but what I'm illustrating is a car from the nineteen fifties and a car from the nineteen eighties in general. True, is like, but it's not this, even a contest. At, at the same time, if we look at this, you know, cars from the nineteen fifties. You know, ease of maintenance was the difference. Right, because it had to be, because you had to change yeah. your engine every 30,000 miles. So, like, yeah, like uh, a Tri-5 out. Chevy is much easier to maintain. Absolutely. And more, arguably more reliable than a Ferrari 250. Yeah, probably. Yeah, but that's the thing, is that obviously a 250 is worth like, way more. That's a very extreme example. Weird. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> let's say... Let's say 250 I'll, GTOs <clears throat> are worth more than Tri-5 Chevys. Let, let's say a Lancia Aurelia. Like, that's... Mm. You know, kind of like equal as far as like attainability. Sure, but like Aurelia is worth more than Tri Five, and always yeah. has been, always will be. Honestly, Tri Fives they're they're not that expensive. No, I mean, they're really cheap now, actually, with the yeah. exception of the Nomad. Oh yeah, they're very cheap. And like a fifty-seven or fifty-eight Nomad, boy, that would be cool. There's a f- now that the cars from the fifties are kind of coming down in value because everybody wants one is dead. Pretty much, or dying. Um, yeah, or dying. They're doing the pre-war thing. Talking about you, boomers. Yeah, they're doing the pre-war thing, but they're, um, yeah, but they're they're um, not as rare or sought right. after. Right. Right. Uh, so there's like some really cool cars. I've been trying to figure out like what I want to buy, and I, like a lot of '50s Mopars really have me going right now. Yeah, like some of the Chryslers, like the, like the, the early Chry- firepower Hemi Chryslers. Yeah, the the Chrysler letter the, like, cars, the weird like diagonal head and tail lights. Yeah. like what am I even looking at? Uh, Plymouth Fury, a Desoto Fire Dome. Like. Yeah. Oh yeah, what a great name! Yeah, <laughs> it's like a fantastic name. Hey baby, I want to show you the Fire Dome. The the pre Hemi Desotos also had like one of the best grills of the late forties and early fifties. So yeah, those cars are coming down value very quickly. I was watching, I think it was on YouTube, a thirteen twenty video. Um, where a funny car racer started doing power tour with his 57 <laughs> wagon. Awesome. And last year, he had just a blown Hemi in it, a regular whatever. This year, he has a funny car engine in it. Perfect. So it's <laughs> detuned from 3,600 to 2,500 horsepower. <laughs> detuned. <laughs> yeah. And they literally, in order to drive it from track to track, they changed the valve springs. They put a wrench on the blower so it can't spin. They take the burst plate out of the intake manifold, and they put a throttle body on it, and they run it on a different fuel injection system. That's so ridiculous. And it makes 700 horse NA, and that's what they drive it down the street on. <laughs> 700 horse, and then I got to replace that a mile-long list of things, and I'll make 2,500. But, I mean, it's incredible. They can make engines that can make almost 4,000 horsepower, and they are water-jacketed, and they've got bearings that can hold up on the street. Yeah. And they, this car ran... <laughs> This car ran a 690. That's hilarious. <laughs> in the quarter. W- wait, wait, one second. It 2,400 horsepower and ran a 690? I think it's like 2,600 horsepower. Yeah. It ran a 690. It's 3,600 pounds. Okay. The thing hooked. But and that's just... <laughs> I, I just hear those power numbers. I'm like, that's ridiculously slow. Well, it, it's 3,600 pounds. It's a full steel body. Yeah, that's true. It is a full steel body. Because like, in my mind, I'm like, wait, isn't the world's fastest Civic like about that as well? 
<laughs> and like that's like I don't know. But I mean, that's probably a like a driven, street drivable car. It's probably like a fifteen hundred horsepower Civic, though. Yeah, but I mean, it's like still street drivable. But anyway, um, right. I'm not saying it's not. It's probably just half the weight too. But yeah. Anyway, back to uh, saying about fifties cars. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the uh, the the fifties Mopar is like really have me going because they're like they don't have as much cachet as like the tri fives do. Right. Even yeah, though nobody like, knows about fifties Mopar. Yeah, and it's like and when you think about it, they're really cool. Cause like Christine was a Plymouth Fury. I don't know what that is. A Stephen King movie. Well, all of our listeners would probably know that who Christine well, is. Well, I think all of our listeners would not know who Christine well, is. Well, it's a story of a uh, like a Plymouth Fury that was uh, like possessed by a demon and tries to kill people. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's really cool. That sounds but, like a Corvair. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> but like, they had like just... Uh, the, also, I'm Ralph Nader. Yeah. They, they had... <laughs> all right, so these cars had some of the most power you could get in the 1950s. Okay. They had the most wild engines of like the Hemis and stuff, mm-hmm. and they were, had the most over the top, like you know, what like you mean? just like the most over the, the top 1950s bodies. Like, look if you can type in like a 57 Plymouth Fury into uh, on the Google here, so we can show our, uh, the uh, people that are streaming. Um, Like, if you look at just how wild and the size of these fins and everything, like, it is, like, the most 50s, 50s car you could ever 50s. Ugh, I don't like this. Also, I do like having a streaming computer that can handle the web. Yeah, I know, right? We can actually go on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> oh, there's only one crappy photo. No, no, you cl- click on those little side ones. It's oh, ha- it, this is, this is Hemmings. It's a... Mm-mm, that is not a Hemi, but still. That's still a really cool air intake. I agree. Wow, that thing's super clean. But yeah, look at the size of those fins in the back. It's just ridiculous. I still don't want that. The thing is, with the, with a the 50s car, I don't want something that's like, like as far as 50s American cars go, I want the most like over-the-top, ridiculous-looking car you could possibly get. Like That's what I care about with a 50s car. Uh, yeah, I guess, that's fine. You'd be fit out better in the uh, lowrider crowd, I think, though. I, yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. They, they like... That's they, like, also power coat their frames and like pinstripe them. And and... To be fair, that's also kind of like I, you know, when we first started like hanging out, I was like super into lowriders. So like back in like tenth grade, it's a so. miracle we ever talked to each other. Yeah, it's because we both had skills math. <laughs> 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 the dumb people math. Yeah, dumb people math. Yeah, which I found out is actually if you if you were a high schooler listening to this, take skills math because you can get away get all your high school creds taking just algebra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I did that's, not have to take I think, like, my maximum level of <laughs> mathematics is basically algebra, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I did. I did, I, I did algebra, too. Right? And you, like, you totally don't need more than algebra in the real There's world. You do th- not need calculus. Uh, you might need trig. Trigonometry. Okay, I, I, I did trigonometry. I, tri- trig is something I need, yeah. Trigonometry yes. is something I definitely need. But whatever. I got around it. I became really good at writing. By, so I kind of just overcame my handicap i just started taking classes of things i enjoyed and that was that yeah that's it thank yeah, you art yeah. exactly <laughs> um yeah so uh but anyway yeah. so p 1800s are insanely expensive they go buy a plymouth fury I another car it's just a p in I, I highly recommend you do not buy a 50s plymouth fury but i do recommend a 50s hemi mopar so there we go right. I want to go back to a local story uh, again. This one actually does have a link to something, oh, which good. is kind of cool. And you're going to probably immediately think that I support this when I tell you about it. But in reality, I'm not sure if I do. So uh, MnDOT has done $2.1 million of studies to determine that people don't change their speed, whether the speed limit's 55 or 60. So they're just going to change like 70% of Minnesota's 55 mile an hour roads to 60s. Wait a minute. One second. Just two point one million dollars of my money that could have gone to fixing potholes was or used to put those little black boxes on the road with the little rubber thingies to figure out yep. that people go. Yep. Why didn't they just do a Facebook poll? Why didn't they just do it? Like everybody says, like you don't need to spend two point one million dollars to figure that out. Yeah, like just look at like citations in that area or something like that. that I don't know. That's something that <laughs> that's. I understand statistics are important, and that the amount of money to the amount of gain for that statistic is just not worth it to me. No, no, they, like you ask anybody in every you canvas a neighborhood, like they'll tell you they'll be honest about Seriously. it. Seriously, 
Like that but would save you so much more money. My main issue with it, honestly, isn't even like the immense amount of tax dollars spent to determine this. It's hmm. the fact that in Minnesota we have something called the Dimmler Amendment in law, which applies to fifty-five mile an hour zones. Okay. Basically, what this amendment says is if you're doing ten miles an hour over the speed limit, so if you're doing sixty-five and a fifty-five or less, and you get a ticket for it and you pay the ticket, it does not go in your driving record. Okay. Only your criminal record. Also applies to sixty mile an hour zones for five miles per hour over. So basically regardless, you can go sixty five. Correct. But my main concern with this is, like, I'll use the North Shore as an example. 55 mile an hour road. That was loud. Yes. Somebody's having fun. Um, people generally speed there. So let's say you get a citation for 74 and then 55. And currently, you get it reduced to 65 and a 55. You pay the fine, you're good. Not on your driving record, is on your criminal record. Okay. But let's say you're doing 79 and a 60. And you get reduced to, what's five miles an hour more than 65, 69 miles an hour. Yeah. Then you get, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> then you get one hell of a blip on your insurance and your driving record. And it's the same reduction that they would have given you with the lower speed limit as mm. far as miles per hour is concerned. Okay. So that's my concern is people are going to drive five miles an hour faster because people just do 10 over all the time. And... I think get an amendment to the Dimmler amendment. I think that would be a really good idea. So just like take leave the 55 alone and then just make the 60 the 10 over. Or change the 55 to a 60 and then put the 65 in as the 60 and leave everything else the same. You know, I think um, what this is, it sounds like the line con of being able to just have 65 mile an hour speed limits everywhere. Because mm-hmm. if you go 55 and you just raise it 10 miles an hour, like right. everybody's going to lose their mind and scream, Think of the children. Why won't somebody think of the children? And again, they're probably, I don't know, but like that part's actually been handled by statistics. Yeah. That, that's been handled. My yeah, concern under- is insurance. <clears throat> ah, yes. It's not even state revenue. Great. Yeah. Charge me $1,000 for a speeding ticket. I just don't care. But insurance, that's the big one. Yeah. No, that's why I, I, that's why I drove my mouse to five. Yeah. So. It's one of those things where it's like, I can have as much fun as anybody else, but I don't get a passing glance from a right. police officer. You know. Well, yeah, you drive something that's basically invisible. It is I mean, ut- utterly invisible. It's so like the Fiat, as it turns <clears> out. <throat> like I've done some pretty hood stuff in that thing around cops, and they just. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> one of my favorite things I've ever read. Uh, I was doing an article on the V20 Camry, which is the 87 through 91 Toyota Camrys. Okay. Um, and when Motor Trend tested it, <clears throat> they were talking about how on their test drive they didn't notice. Because they'd just gotten out of driving a Cutlass Calais with a four-cylinder. Oh, man. <laughs> and, they, and they said, we were literally driving their foot in the same area of the pedal. And we were going 20 miles an hour over the speed limit. We blew past a, pol- <clears throat> a police officer. And the cop didn't do anything. You may have a radar detector, but we have camry <laughs> I love that term. If we wouldn't get totally sued by Toyota, I would love to change our podcast name to Camry Flage. We probably could. It's one word. Uh, 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 well, maybe, but I, I'm not sure since it has Camry in it. <laughs> yeah. but And that is a really big global trademark for Toyota. Yeah, but I think Camry is another, is actually a word that Toyota used. It's like Corona. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if it's something like that, then we should maybe consider it. Camry yeah, Flash. I'll have to look up the, I'm going to have to look up the word Camry came from because I was very much enjoying that. They came up with the name Camry when Toyota had all their cars named after different parts of the sun. Oh. So the Corona and the Crown. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So. Thank you, Toyota, for doing some really weird stuff. And they had, like, some other weird ones, like the Carina and the Cressida. It was either named after the sun or it was named after, like, What like part of the sun is a Supra? Uh, the Supra is the name that they gave it because they didn't want to have the negative press of J- Ron Jeremy buying a, Cel- a, Cam- or a Celica XX. Ah. Yeah. They, that's why they came up with the, the name Supra was like an 11th hour decision. They almost called the XX in America. I got a targeted ad on uh, Netflix oh. this week for the Supra, the new one. I watched it all the way through. There you go. I Perfect. wish I could rewatch it, but I couldn't. Oh. And it, most of it was Akio Toyota just talking. I'm like, this is a really cool commercial. These are really cool. Um, See how. So actually, there's something we have to verify um, hmm. about the Mark V Supra. Uh, it's regarding the um, the vents actually being... Some of them are. 
Well, so being some of them actually being <clears throat> able to be opened up instead of just being closed off. Because I guess when that um, when that he, when uh, the uh, Tetsuya Tata, the product development manager, uh, was asked about that, he was like cornered in like a hallway by a oh. reporter, and he just like said that in passing. Hmm. So we're actually gonna ha- it, yeah, it's just like an off the comp like Trump and Trump style sort of thing. So we're gonna have to verify that. So I'm at the auto show, and I, I think am, some of them are. When I'm at the auto show and I am not um, putting black leather gloves into Broncos, I will be looking at the Mark V Supra and verifying that it does have openable vents. At least figure out which ones are. Yeah. I think the designer of that Supra was on Smoking Tire, and he confirmed that it was the majority of them. Oh, okay. Could be, but not all of them. Oh, cool. All right. That's tight. But I don't actually know for sure. It's been a while since I heard that. I'm going to have to listen to the Smoking Tire. It's just been... It's wow. a good podcast, but they put out so many long episodes now, it's just hard. You know, their episodes are about as long as ours. No, a lot of them are like two hours now. Jesus. And well, I, you know, I try for an hour and 15 or less. So. Well, yeah. Well, the, my only issue with the smoking tire, like, I love the smoking tire. It's just that I have to go through, like, 15, or like, not really 15, five minutes of, like, just add. Like, Matt Farah telling me about how awesome his morning coffee is. I just skip the first five minutes of the show entirely, no matter what's in yeah. it. Yeah. But no, I actually, I, I like yeah, Manfara. Beeline coffee and the shirts. I'm like, yeah, that's all great. You know what's I'm annoying is we, we know the... Dylan Optics. You, you know what's annoying is we know the names of all those companies now. Yeah. So it worked. It worked perfectly. Even though we does, fast forward But I'm still it. not buying Beeline coffee or Dylan Optics. I'm just probably. not interested in those products. Eh, if I lived in California, I might get Beeline coffee. I like coffee. I like coffee, if too. It, if it wasn't for the fact I worked at a coffee shop, I might buy Beeline coffee. But although i have expensive taste in some areas i do not spend 30 dollars a bag on coffee three dollars a bag thirty dollars a bag i don't know about that not worth it i mean it does have some cool artwork jana said on not it. worth it so oh. and jana's like the queen of coffee so yeah it's just too much yeah no absolutely you not. can get some really good coffee for less than that so oh. yeah no i'm not putting down beeline coffee i'm sure it's great but the roast attire is too expensive in my opinion no it, th- there's a there's a happy medium it's yeah, it's it's like beer to me. Like I'm, not, I'm not caribou spending. dark roast is kind of my happy medium. That stuff is super good and really cheap. I'm just jaded because I work at a coffee shop and I get normally thirty dollar a bag coffee for free. So I don't. Yeah, I just steal Corey's coffee. When I just I, want I just coffee. I just love my where I work. It's like hey, let's go work on old work cars. At a coffee shop. You work no. at a. Car, uh, Volkswagen repair shop, but there's a coffee shop immediately attached to us. Right, the same right, company. Right. So I like telling people I, I'll switch it around. Like if I'm if I don't want to like if I'm trying to like hide that I'm like a car guy for just to like not have to get into a conversation, I'll just say I work at a coffee shop. Fair enough. And I'll say, what do you do? I say, it's convenient. <laughs> then they say, what what do you do? I say, I'm a service advisor. Well, I tell people like <laughs> they're like you're a service advisor at a coffee shop, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I yeah I'm an architectural draftsman. Then they just kind of glaze over and walk away, oh, which is perfect. great. I don't tell them like yeah BMW Master Tech. Yeah no, <laughs> like, they don't. They don't. <laughs> there no. are times you you hide things like, like on purpose. Yeah, very on purpose. Oh and Jesus! I just tell them I'm an archaeologist, and then they go, oh you like dinosaurs, and I go, no. No, it, it, I love you. J- you love Jana's me. more. Jana uh, didn't, studies Barney. Well, no, she didn't oh. let on what she really does. What she really does. <laughs> Is if she doesn't want to talk to somebody about something and they tell them about their life, yeah. Jana comes back with like this like savage, passive aggressive Minnesotan thing where she talks her their ear off for the rest of the night about the difference between shards and shards. Oh yeah. Shards and they are can't glass. escape. <laughs> shards are glass and shards is pottery and ceramics. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and they're spelled the same way. No, S H E R D versus S H A R D. And there is one time I turned off a documentary because they said pot shard. And I was mm. like, nope. And Ryan's like, that was a perfectly good documentary. I was like, he's not a it real was. archaeologist. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I am the same level of obtuse, so I, I totally get behind that. <laughs> I get really salty when I see a 91 <laughs> Volvo in Stranger Things and I downvert vote the entire, like the first oh, dude. episode because there's a 91 I shut stuff Volvo off for reasons just like that. Yeah. They, they had the wrong car in it in the background. Like, yeah, I could do a better job than that. Hire me. <sighs> Reminds me of that time we watched Over the Top. That was just an awful movie. That was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. We're not talking about that god-awful movie. All right. Well, we won't talk about that. Let's talk about... Indiana Jones is because it's 
almost correct, except for... Well, almost doesn't cut it. Well, no, like, all the thi- like, to make it a dramatic interpretation of archaeology, okay. it's, it's a good thing. Cause but aren't you a paleontologist? No, no, that's dinosaurs. That's I mean, dinosaurs. She's oh, what am I thinking of? Um, no, what's the one where you study cultures? Anthropologist. Anthropologist. Yeah. You're an anthropologist. Archaeology is a subsect of anthropology. Anthropology is both. just... Anthropo- so anthropology is the overarching... Yep. Yeah. Really? Ar- archaeology is just anthropology of dead people. Sort of. Huh, okay. I mean, you could also... So anthropology is... There's like three or four subsects of it, depending on if you're going by the European model versus the North American model. Well, there's a Twingo in Europe, so let's go with the European oh, model. So there's three then. It's basically linguistics, um, cultural anthropology, and bioanthropology, Holy which is like... God archaeology forensic anthropology i bet those meetings you have are super lit Uh, no they actually get really drunk yeah yeah like yeah no i wasn't being facetious anthropologists (laughs) like rage (laughs) it's like preschool teachers when they go out to a no no when when the triple a conference was in minneapolis we got so drunk we walked all 13 miles of (laughs) um (laughs) skyway is it the only people the next banquet to go to An- anthropologists are the only people that like party on par with like thrash metalheads and like punks. Like it's the only like group of people that I've met that are get on that level. And we get all the research done too. <laughs> Cuz like yeah, it, like it, there's only like two places in the world that you'll ever see somebody with like like a guy with a ponytail and a beard yeah. hauling around a keg of beer on a hand truck while already inebriated. And that's either going to be a municipal waste concert, or that's going to be the AAA conference. <laughs> the two places so, that ever happens. Like, cause like, part I feel of like there's it, probably some overlap part there. Part of being an anthropologist is, you know, immersing yourself in the culture. So that means you get to drink with the local people. And some of that shit gets you so hammered. Like, I was just talking to um, one of my professors, and he was at a site in um, Africa, like, probably you know, Southern Africa, but not South Africa. And they drink um, this fermented milk. Oh, gross. It, so it's like an alcohol made it from yeah. fermented milk. So it's like Kahlua from Africa. Yeah. And apparently it just <laughs> totally Fs you up. Huh. Like, well, I mean, you're also like 15 pounds. So yeah, I, yeah. anything with super high proof, you're just going to get. Exactly. But this is like <laughs> a full grown adult. Man. Right, right, right. It's like, yeah, I was not okay after that. I'll never do it again. <laughs> I was not okay after that. <laughs> so I love it. Speaking of anthropology and archaeology. Yes. Oh, God. This um, is going to be a tangent. No, not even. Um, well, seeing as we're on a tangent, yes, <laughs> it will be a tangent. It will be uh, a re- relatively be. not. Uh, Sir David Attenborough is that oh, God, British this guy this is who is uh, Sir David Attenborough is that British guy that does like all the yeah, I know Attenborough. Yeah. yeah. So his brother, um, which was uh, David Attenborough, he was the old man in Jurassic Park one. Okay. You know, you know Richard. the grandpa? No. No. I haven't seen it in ages. I think but I you, have it on Laserdisc. You, you know, the, you know the, the grandpa from Jurassic Park, the guy that owns the park? With the white, I think hair, so, white yeah. hair and a beard and a white suit? Yeah, I think so. So, uh, Sir David Attenborough has a third brother named John Attenborough. Do you know what John Attenborough went on to do? Yeah, uh, anthropology? No. He was the head of Rolls Royce and Alfa Romeo. At the same time? Uh, yes, he did Rolls Royce and had a one-year overlap and became the head of Alfa Romeo's uh, English uh, branch. Here oh my! at Motor Cult, where our tangents go full circle. Yeah, full circle back into our next topic, which is... Oh my word. Speaking of Rolls Royce, um, <laughs> <laughs> Jalopnik has an article about some of the most ridiculous Rolls Royces that, you can get, that have been made this year. Uh, I'm not whitelisting you. Um, so Rolls Royce, there's like a 99% take rate of Rolls Royce is being customized. Like literally 1% of them are just standard, whatever cars, right? Everything else is like one off. So they did some of the most ridiculous cars. So, um, the one last year, it was really ridiculous. was the Phantom and Fuchsia, which was white with a purple interior. Gross. And it, oh yeah, they got, it was like a special one off purple um, this year, they had the uh, Silver Ghost Collection, which have made uh, 35 cars with actual silver accents, and everything that wasn't silver was real copper. Oh, my. Yeah. So, like, 
that spirit of ecstasy is silver. Actually made of silver, yes. That is terrifyingly expensive. Yes, uh, and so is that umbrella. Uh, they had <laughs> <laughs> that umbrella right there costs more to put in your car than a base model Mirage. I believe that because the standard non-silver umbrella is like three thousand dollars. Yeah, and the silver one is like. Fifteen thousand. Great. I thought you meant uh, like rain umbrella, and I got very confused for a second. That is. So this it clock. Is what? Yeah, that's yeah, a that's yeah, a rain that's umbrella, a rain umbrella that fits handle. in the door. Yeah. In the and door. They normally cost three thousand dollars. Yeah. They're, each one's handmade. Yeah, you get the spot in the door, but you don't actually get umbrellas unless you buy them. Yeah, it, it's they're all handmade, so like yeah, it, it, they're. Oh. Realistically, if it didn't say Rolls Royce, I'd still be like an eight hundred dollar umbrella. Yeah, I'm sure you could. Yeah, find yeah. something that would maybe work. But. Yeah, you can probably find like, a free umbrella in <laughs> a parade somewhere. Um, uh, that clock uh, is entirely made out of 925 silver. Great. Yes, is fantastic. Now, this one is interesting, this black and yellow Rolls Royce. I don't know if I like that. Uh, oh, it, it is gross. Oh, this looks like a Rinspeed interior. It It, it is uh, Benjamin uh, Sloss. Uh, <laughs> This is the Google's <laughs> vice president of engineering, Scar. You have terrible but advice. When, now, now, let's just no. stop for a second, because I want to show you something really cool. Uh, that dashboard, if you look at that, uh, that is not black paint. That's, that's ruthenium. It, the ruthenium is a metal that is scarcer than gold, and that's the natural color of it. Only 20 tons of it are mined per year, yes. compared to 2,500 oh tons of God. gold. This just sounds like irresponsible decision. Oh, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, consumption oh, God, at its best. I'm totally meant to give a communist trigger warning before this this section. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any communist sy- sympathies, please fast forward five minutes. <laughs> you do not want to see this. This is a Ryan topic. Fast forward yes. ten minutes. Um, the whispered muse. Uh, that is all uh, silk. In the interior, that is lining that leather, all the strings and is everything. Is that silk. rose gold? Yes, it, looks it is. Like it. The one and only rose gold uh, spirit of ecstasy, made of actual rose gold, yep. which is the first for Rolls Royce. Ugh. Honestly, that dashboard looks beautiful. I just don't like yeah. that. That's the whispering muse. I actually like that a lot. That's all. I like the piano white finish, but yeah. like beyond that, I'm not I li- a fan. I like the sculpted silk. Oh, no, I see the purple. Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh no. He's got a purple and <laughs> as well. And I like purple. It, it looks like Barney much. just arrived all over that interior. Oh, uh, that oh, that no. man has a collection of all purple cars. They're, every car he owns is that color purple. Oh, no. You know what? This, <laughs> that's what happens in real when you have, like, Enough money in real life to build the car you built in Grand Theft Auto V. Oh, man. Like, but you do it to a Rolls Royce. Uh, at least they're ghosts, not phantoms. Yeah, but to be honest, that car's going to be like the coolest shit in the world in like 20 years. No. Yeah. No. 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 That car is the modern equivalent of a cocaine out like 560 SEL no. back in the 80s. Those are not nobody cool. nobody likes that purple in a car. Yeah, especially, yeah, if that 80s car is purple or, like, bright yellow, just no. No, no, of course. Well, maybe bright yellow, but no, not purple. They oh, they did something to a Cullinan, though? Uh. Well, no, to be fair, they do. That's actually a standard thing. Uh. Uh. Yeah, it's a viewing suite. Um, you press a button, and two chairs come out the back with champagne. <laughs> 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 That's for British hunting, I assume. So yes. Yeah. Straight or dry. I've seen right. some, right. We're still considering that one too. That's a, it, that sounds like an Overfinch Range Rover feature. This is another one of that oh, same car. Man. Now, if you notice, there's a glass partition there. Yeah. And so you can have people in the back during your hunting party, but if you get too hot, you can still come inside and leave the rear end open for better viewing. <laughs> <laughs> I really hate rich people sometimes. <laughs> Does that um, does that cup holder set have the little uh, silver hold downs to keep the glasses in place? Yes, it does, and you those are actual crystal as well. I'm just going to apologize to the people listening that, to the audio um, version. Jana, those glasses are all crystal. Dear God, why would you want those in your car? But this reminds me of the fancy uh, schmancy. Like, the car that Archer gets for his birthday that his mom steals from him. Yes, that one is his challenger. Bar. Yep. Now, um, <laughs> that's where that's where they actually got the idea from. That ceiling is the starlight ceiling that you can get. Um, that top one was all carbon structures where they used um, they used the same idea of the, the um, you know the fiber optic lights, but 
that's what the roof looks like. I think that's actually kind of a cool idea using the, the starlight. The, I like starlight. Yeah. I would actually like to do that in one of my cars, maybe in the Cressida. Um, I think that looks really cool. I know a tiny house that did that. Really that's cool. actually really cool. Yeah. Well, this is roughly a tiny house. Yeah. Oh, now we're Probably on the past three times as much. But yes, now that is a absolutely ridiculous list of cars. The communists that are that's listening. Cool. I'm going to leave this on the screen for five minutes to hope that this becomes our YouTube thumbnail. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad about that. Uh, I, I, I'm a lot less turned off about that car than you guys are. However, hopefully your notes are working. Oh, wait. Although the next story is mine. Yes. Whoops. <laughs> so, okay. Remember, like, six months ago, Chevy announced their new base powertrain for the Silverado? Ah, yes. <laughs> that 2.7-liter turbo four-cylinder with the electric water pump and everything? Yes, I'm not going to steal your thund thunder. It's, Please uh, tell me what's wrong with it. It's Okay, so it's out in the wild now. Yes. People have actually bought these things. Foolish. Guess what the highway MPG observed of the four-cylinder 2.7 liter Silverado is. 29. 18. What? 18 is what they've been getting on of the highway four with the four-cylinder. Mm. Guess what the 5.3 liter Gen 5 small block V8 is getting on the highway. God. Um, 19? 19. 21. Oh, my God. Yeah, so the four-cylinder is now it's getting officially three MPG worse on the highway than the V8. They didn't discover this in <laughs> product testing. Somehow, no. Ah, well, you see, that is why GM needed a bailout. Uh, yeah, so I'm not exactly sure why they didn't notice that, but what? that seems like kind of an oversight. All right, so one second here. Yeah. I need, we need to scroll back a little bit. Uh, what the hell were statistics teachers doing Ten years ago. Well, teaching us statistics. <laughs> Very poorly, apparently, because nobody can seem to get any basic research done correctly. Like, these are all things that, Except like... Except for MnDOT? No, MnDOT <laughs> still wasted $2.1 million. Oh, the beauty. It's also 314 pounds lighter than the V8. But I don't care. <laughs> like, I know, but I'm just... It's so much worse. It's incredible. I don't understand that that, how they've done that. <clears throat> and it sounds worse, too. So... I just don't understand, like, like th this is, I'm not blaming GM for this. Interesting. Because there seems to be a larger overarching problem here with America. And our o larger overarching problem with America is our statistic teachers fucking suck. I actually had to use my, my one F-bomb for that. They suck. Very passionate. Like, um, because when I was in statistics, my statistics teacher taught me, hey, there's a lot of stuff you're going to learn in this class. Here's the first thing you're going to learn. This is a P.E. ratio. Now you can successfully <laughs> trade stocks. Learn this. This will be on every single test. Yep. And in life. Yeah. Like P.E. ratios are important because a statistics, that should actually be a standard class. Like before you graduate, you have to take statistics on the off chance that you're put in charge of designing of product a... testing <laughs> anything, anything at all. This four-cylinder engine has cylinder deactivation. It's allowed to run on two cylinders when cruising on the. <laughs> apparently, doesn't have. Uh, that's not the issue. Uh, but yeah, it, was, it seems unlikely that that is deactivating with that kind of fuel economy. That's so bad. Is this? The <laughs> Can new... you imagine how bad that sounds? <laughs> is this the new GM eight six four? Oh, the V eight six four. The uh, mechanical yeah. device fitted to a V8 <laughs> to disable foolish. cylinders. Um, I, I don't know, but I mean, this is just worse in every way than the 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6. But it is. It, it's just it's an awful engine by an awful company run it's by awful people. Complicated. It's got an electric water pump. When, pe when people wonder why I like I'm not an American car enthusiast, it's because of crap like this. Like. <laughs> Say, Granted, it's probably still better than the big three German corporate four-cylinders. Oh, no, I guarantee you that. But, I mean, I'm also not much of a fan of the big three German companies. Uh, thank you, sweetie. And the uh, fuel economy, I guess, is considerably better with those. That is absolutely ludicrous. Uh, that's I've not heard anything like that before in my life. Yeah, I would put it up on the screen, but A, it's depressing, and B, I really want that to become the YouTube thumbnail. So, so. I, rem I remember back... <laughs> When I was like a lot boy at Mitsubishi and Kia, there were a lot, lot boy. Yeah, Fetch like, me a this, mirage. This was like right after like high school. I remember this. Um, there were people that come in and try to buy Sorrentos, mm -hmm. and they'd go and they'd say, "I want the all-wheel drive, but I also want the four-cylinder." And I'd sit there. In a I, Sorrento. Yeah, and I would say to them, "I'm like, why don't you get the all-wheel drive six-cylinder?" They go, "I want better fuel economy." I'm like, why don't you look at that fuel economy? 
and they'd look at the two side by side. <coughs> and the four the all wheel drive four cylinder Sorrento got one mile per gallon worse fuel economy on the highway. It's incredible how but often this happens. Five miles an hour worse per gallon. Uh, well, yeah, five miles per gallon. Sorry, worse on in the city. Four cylinder got worse city MPG. Way worse because it has to struggle so much to get to speed. And that's the thing. I, like, I find that issue. a lot. Well, not even just like four versus six or six versus eight, but also displacement. Yeah. Because like the BMW E46 3 Series, mm-hmm. the 328 and the 330 do considerably better on fuel real world than the 323 and 325. Yeah. It's, it doesn't make any sense. No, it makes sense if you think about it. I guess it's just that much less stressed out. You, you, <laughs> you're putting less fuel into the vehicle because if you. We have these engines that are, you know, really small displacement, super high revving. You're going to mm-hmm. be putting more gas into that small area. And over the course of, say, five minutes, you will burn more gas than you would on a larger displacement, lower revving engine. But, I mean, these, my example, I mean, they're all the same block. They're all the that same is, accessories, yeah, that, everything. So, yeah, it's... So, I mean, it a, just has to be the efficiency of the larger piston, basically. Yeah, it's... Or the better, bigger you, there's, stroke there's or something. A, there's a happy medium. I mean... The and thing it is not this 2.7 liter. Gear. No, absolutely not. You know, as far as like small engines go, like you can't just like throw a small engine into anything. Right. Like, if you have a small engine, you have to have an entire chassis that goes with it. Correct. That's why the CRX HF to date still has like fuel economy that's better than most hybrids. Oh and yeah, that thing. Wow, that's. I mean, other than like first gen Insight, I don't know if anything. No, I mean, really touches that. The the 85 CRX HF, I think, got like 50 miles per gallon city. Yeah, I think it was yeah fifty or sixty. MPG. Yeah, it was. Just it, nuts. It was I think it was sixty in the on the uh, on the highway. But there was like, also like the Cobalt XFE and the Metro. Yeah, X, X, XFI I think is yes, what they so called that X, one. XFI. There's been a few. But uh, the the CR, well, what they did with the CRX was different than most other cars. They did this with the EG as well with the the Civic VX. Mm-hmm. Was not only did they put a small engine in it, they put it on like a really big diet, and they like changed like. The red line of the car, they changed the camshaft, mm-hmm. changed the transmission even. Like, they did everything to make this car more fuel efficient. And wheels and tires and things like that. Yeah, and so now, you, like, if you want, like, a really cool car that's, you know, like a good put basis to build off of, mm-hmm. a lot of people go for the Civic, like, the EG Civic version. A lot of people? A lot of people go for the EG Civic VX because the the... Uh, EG Civic VX, you had VTEC, you had inky wheels, you had a lighter weight chassis. Like, why would you not want that? It's perfect. So, yeah, that's actually, like, a really cool thing that they do. I wish more manufacturers would do that instead of just, like, jumping to, like, let's put 8 trillion airbags in the car and put a hybrid drivetrain. And, hey, look let's at that. Add cool. some more weight. Wait, we just got 40 miles per gallon. Look at our great accomplishment. And then, like, their janitor is driving, like, a $2,000 <laughs> Civic. Like, it's yeah. better fuel economy. Like, I, it's just... There's it, people say it can't be done to him. Like no, it, it can be done. You make it lighter. Yeah, you, you make it lighter. It can be done because Pagani makes a car with a V12 that co- weighs less than three thousand pounds. Yep. Like you can make a light car, and you can make a car that's fuel efficient. Like we know that there are cars that are like, look at the Mirage. Like the Mirage, you get forty miles per gallon while having full throttle <laughs> while being like entirely about the price point mm-hmm. not about technology if you take something that has the ability to get that kind of fuel economy yeah and you actually put some money behind it you can also have performance too it's just yeah gm doesn't seem to get that and neither does ford and that's why they're failing and i'm uh, kind of engine, okay with that this engine was clearly designed engineered and tuned for epa test cycles yes it was that, that's why it exists yep yeah um, all right. I think on that uh, de- rather depressing uh, bombshell, <laughs> that they need to try harder. No, it's a good thing because it means you should just buy a V8, and V8s are good. Well, that you need to buy a V8, or you need to buy an EG Civic. So I guess that's a good thing. It's not. That's <laughs> if not you're going to buy a Silverado, buy go a out Civic. and buy an EG Civic. There you go. That is our bombshell. Thank you for <laughs> listening. We will catch you on Wednesday. Catch you guys on Wednesday.